The International Crisis Group has been worried about Iran's nuclear program for many years. The reason is uh, the risk of proliferation in the Middle East is serious. If Iran develops nuclear weapons, you can have a proliferation cascade and other countries in the region might go nuclear as well, and that's obviously very destabilizing. So we've been working on this issue since the very beginning when it became clear that Iran had a secret nuclear program. I think the policy construct we helped inspire kept the JCPOA alive, even if in life support. And this is, I think, a clear a statement of impact by Crisis Group. So I joined Crisis Group in 2012 and started going uh, to negotiations. I ended up going to 22 rounds of talks around the world. And I found that it was very easy to actually talk to the parties because of Crisis Group's reputation as a neutral organization uh, that has the right and requisite kind of expertise uh, to help them bridge the gap. And that's precisely what I did over the course of two and a half years until the deal was finalized. Uh, and when it was, uh, our language could be identified almost verbatim uh, in uh, key parts of the agreement. The conclusion of the agreement was not the end of our engagement on this issue. Uh, in 2016, uh, Donald Trump, a fervent critic of the agreement, was elected as U.S. president. The fact is, this was a horrible, one-sided deal that should have never, ever been made. And he came to office on the promise of uh, tearing this deal apart. It took a year and a half after Trump came to office to withdraw from the agreement. Uh, and in this period, during my travel to Europe, I'd realized that most European governments were focused on keeping the U.S. in compliance with the deal and didn't really have a plan B, although the writing was on the wall and it was clear that it's just a matter of time until uh, the U.S. leaves the agreement. And so, noticing that this is a big shortcoming, I spent almost the first half of 2018 in Europe trying to brainstorm my ideas and eventually organized a uh, workshop in Brussels bringing together European policymakers, bankers, entrepreneurs, sanctions experts to try to come up with solutions that would provide Iran with a degree of uh, dividends that were promised in the agreement in the, even in the absence of the United States. That turned into a proposal uh, that we privately shared uh, with European governments uh, a few uh, months before U.S. withdrawal from the agreement, completely destroying the delicate balance uh, that was achieved in this agreement. I watched the European reaction after President Trump pulled the plug. It was clear that ideas had been adopted by the European Commission, by the European Council, and even the trading mechanism uh, that we had suggested took hold. And Europe really tried its best uh, to keep the agreement afloat in the absence of the United States. In the end, because the global financial system is so dominated by the US dollar, the risk calculus benefit for European companies pushed them in a the direction of complying with US sanctions. But nevertheless, we believe our idea had a significant impact because for the first time, Europe came up with a mechanism known as instrument and support of trade exchanges that allowed the European autonomy in terms of deciding on who they want to do trade with. It is true that 75% of trade between Europe and Iran was lost, but nevertheless, I think the European effort in trying to preserve their trade with Iran in effect had the impact of preserving the JCPOA. Because the Iranians realized that the Europeans were really trying hard and uh, the, the agreement remained afloat in the absence of the United States until uh, there was a change in administration in Washington. And this is, I think, a clear uh, statement of impact by Crisis Group. I think the policy construct we helped inspire kept the JCPOA alive in the past three years, even if in life support and uh, prevented the U.S. and Iran from stumbling into a, a conflict, although they came pretty close to it three times in the course of 2019 and 2020. And whether or not the JCPOA stands the test of time, our work on this issue will continue because it's critical to preventing nuclear proliferation, 
in the Middle East and also uh, to prevent yet another conflict that the region just cannot afford.